Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're here with Princeton and Mimi Wong from Prince Customs. We're going to take a look at some of the custom pieces that he's had here at the show today. Of course, you've you've moved some pieces already today too. Yeah. Which that's perfectly much to show you. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. But uh, no, I always I always uh, fell yeah. in love with the uh, Persevere in Atlanta, and this Got is some a fancy one. To this, show you at least. this is uh, most definitely a fancy version of it. You want to go and give it an explanation? I'm going to hand it to you and let sure, you do your so thing. Sure. So the it's a new take on you know like a button lock auto, but instead of having any type of exposed button, the whole clip side scale slides downwards. Oh wow. So the nice thing about that is you can keep your full grip on the knife while you're doing the action to right. fire it. Whereas with the other ones, you're like doing a weird, like, oh, my thumb's on the side, I'm not really pushing on the scale. Right, right. But yeah, like you just pull like, it down and it fires. That's so incredible. Pull it down and lock it. I also integrated a nice little lever here. If you rock it down forward, it keeps the scale from sliding. So you have a lock mechanism. Fire it. Some people want it there because if they're like pushing it in to their pocket, they might accidentally push on the wrong side and like release it. Push cool. it back the other way and yeah, it's live again. So a little integrated locking bar. Yeah, I, want, I put it there in the backspacer so it doesn't mar up the aesthetics. Like I like it's it. Symmetrical on both sides without like, like a button. Or it's genius. There. It's genius. Thank you. And so I'm, I'm also hearing that you had a very short time frame to. Uh, to put this this knife together and <laughs> yeah, have so, it debuted. So Walt and Matama, he owns the IP on the mechanism itself. Okay. And um, we had been in talks about me helping them to bring it to market and do the engineering behind it. And I'd be back and forth, back and forth, and a couple weeks before Blade Atlanta, I mean Blade West last year. He finally gave me the approval, and that was two weeks. So you had two weeks. <laughs> I had two weeks to fully design it, program it, like work fixture, out the kinks, machine it, oh and everything. My so I showed up here with two prototypes in two weeks, which was pretty incredible. Which was hell. <laughs> it's pretty incredible, though. That's, uh, yeah, that's, the attention it got after that was has been amazing. So. That's fantastic. And I mean, I don't, I don't mean to so take this anything. This is one of the customs that I do. I try to integrate like different types of grinds than the standard versions. So I like that. Finishing and finishing yeah, I like that. On. I'm going to get in here and get some angles for you guys to see some of these layers and the different machining paths and stuff that they're... I just, I love the fit and finish. And you you build almost 100% of this knife in your facility, if I'm not mistaken? That's right, yeah. So, yeah, blade, all the handle pieces, like the button, all that's in-house. Basically the little screws here. I don't make the springs, of okay. course, yep. and then like a ceramic bearing in there. I don't make that, but everything else is in-house. Wonderful, man. That's incredible yeah, to so know. Everything starting from like water jet blanks. Right. We have a five-axis water jet in the house. Oh, wow. In the shop. And uh, yeah, a bunch of CNC machines, lathes. It's an incredible piece of work. All the laser engraving, anodizing. Cool. Yeah, it's been fun. So. It sounds like it, man. It's, it keeps me busy. It's a fantastic piece. I love it. I fell in love with it, Atlanta. Just the movement alone, the action. It felt, yeah, it felt wonderful. Appreciate and uh, a lot of innovation went into this knife, from my, and I can tell a lot of thought went into it. Yeah, it was a pain getting it into this type of form factor. Right. Like at this thickness, with everything hidden, like you can't see the pivots. The scales actually like fully wrap around the liners. Right. Just so it's kind of hidden how it works. You can barely see it. there's something here. Right. So most people don't really realize that it's a sliding scale. And and how much effort it took to get everything down enough to scale to fit it in there sure, would, yeah. would be would be absolutely insane. I mean, thank yeah. You. So to do that, I had to integrate some of the spring hold, the spring retention. It's actually machined into the scale piece itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it has like to a be, little tab or a hook that you right. like put in afterwards. It has to be built in at that size yeah. when you get to that point. So, yeah. Well, I love the Persevere. Persevere. The Persevere. And y'all check out Princeton's uh, Facebook group as well. Of course, I'm going to tag him in the description so you guys have a chance to check everything out. So, if you want to move across over here and describe this amazing piece of art to so everyone the, yeah, on the channel. This is the latest folder design that I've done. It's called the Orochi. So the inspiration for that name is like Japanese folklore. There's a eight-headed dragon 
and when he's killed, they pull a sword out of his tail. <laughs> oh, cool. So I thought that, you know, when you look at the blade this way, it kind of looks like a dragon's claw. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's insane. It is. I love, I love those. So yeah, this is a frame lock, but I have the bolsters wrap all around. That's what I was going to say. around. You don't see the, the liner, like, sticking through. It also caps over the pivot itself. I love that. What material is that? So this is a Timascus. A Timascus? Yep. It's a vapor blasted for that satin finish and then electronically awesome. anodized. I'm trying to get a good angle on it, too. All oh, the lighting does this thing so much justice. It's insane. You can see the flip and stuff. It's beautiful, man. I, I fell in love with the locking mechanism on it, too. And that's also a Damascus backspacer. You can see the definition in that when you get close. Yeah, so these actually have a little lock bar insert in there. And the detent is actually integral machined into the insert. Let's see if I can get in there and get close. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Yep, there. you can see it. And that, like you were telling me before, that means you don't have to take the knife all the way apart to replace that part. Yeah, exactly. So you just remove this bolster and you can tune it by changing the lock inserts from this side. You don't have to unbolt the entire thing to replace the insert. That's awesome. This is a beautiful piece, man. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're you had it with you this time around to show it to me. Yeah, so you got the thumb stud. And then the, the uh And there's actually a tiny tab here. I love the hidden flipper. And it's it's more usable than you think too. Yeah, it's a fun one. It really is. I like it, man. I'm uh I'm excited. What are you uh what are you looking at over here to the left? Yeah, so this shuriken here. It's a collaboration with Blade. They have me do a small run every year for Blade Show Texas. Oh, awesome. The first year they asked me if I could do a sheriff's badge inspired shuriken. And I couldn't turn down the opportunity to be a pro ninja star maker. So, right? Yeah, I took it on. I love it, dude. I love it. Yeah. Well, I also want to take a look at some of your other stuff that you're doing down here as well. I want to make sure that everybody understands that you are a multifaceted genius <laughs> in my opinion. You take, you take a lot of pride in what you do and you... Uh, you show it in a lot of your pieces. Yeah, some, the, uh, these are uh, lanyard beads and some jewelry. So, 3D printed wax and then investment pass. <laughs> these particular pieces are sterling silver and uh, copper and bronze. So. Get some good lighting on these. There you go. Yeah, I love, I love that, dude. And pushing the batteries with it. So. It's incredible work, man. I, I love the belt as well. Let me give you guys a good little look at the... Yeah, so this is a fully titanium frame belt buckle. And uh, we have damascus steel inserts with different types of PVD coating. So you can get black. You have this kind of rose gold, bronzish color. That's insane. I love it. polished and etched. I'm actually wearing one that has a Damascus frame. Really? Yeah. Nice. Well, dude, uh, did you also want to mention the uh, the sharpening system that we were talking about earlier? It's up to you. Yeah, let's definitely put that in there. I, I love I love giving everybody as many as many details about y'all's work as possible. Uh, but yeah, didn't you say you were? Uh, yeah, I'm partial owner of mine. That's awesome. And the fixture piece, like he was saying, once you get your angle down, it picks up, flips around, and you can get the exact replication of the same angle on the opposite yeah, so side. Yeah. Once you have your blade clamped in here, you set the angle for the bevel that you need. You grind one side to where you want it, and this dovetailed here, so it flips around super easily and accurately. So you have all your angles set for the next side. I love it, man. It's it's genius. I love the fixturing. I'm, I've always been in in love with any type of machining and stuff as well. So I know I know the work that goes into it, and I love looking at all the different yeah. you know all the different elements and things that you put into play. But uh, thanks again. I'm gonna give you guys a good shot of Princeton, so you can say. You say hi to everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to check out the description. Leave a comment below.